Over the last four decades, Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Energy crafted an ambitious plan to develop the kingdom's energy, petrochemical, and mineral industries. Key pillars in the kingdom's strategy were to meet national energy demand from hydrocarbon and renewable resources, to build economically sustainable industries and maximize the value added to the local economy. One man was in the driving seat of Saudi Arabia's petrochemical industry transformation. This man is His Royal Highness, Prince Faisal bin Turki bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Uh, the first time I met His Royal Highness, Prince Faisal bin Turki, was at King Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals. He was a student and I was in the faculty and the director of the research institute. I didn't get to know him well closely, but I heard from his colleagues that he's a serious student. He would be remembered very much of being a very professional and very, uh, very smart, very alert. And more important, uh, he does not enter in any meeting without understanding the details of the details. I remember vividly the first time we met. It was in the parking lot of your office. That was many years ago, and you were very kind to me. You took me from the parking lot up to your office. We had a wonderful conversation, and you're very genuine and warm. Very seldom can you meet someone at your level in the government in a parking lot and have that kind of hospitality. As advisor to the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources, Prince Faisal spearheaded the kingdom's natural gas strategy. He championed ingenuous initiatives to execute Saudi Arabia's strategic economic diversification plans. Prince Faisal was pursuing a vision of diversifying the petrochemical industry by developing new to the country downstream industry segments. Central to his achievements was the formulation of new gas and pricing regulations aimed at supplying gas to the industrial and utility sector. His Royal Highness uh, had uh, a vision of uh, emphasizing and increasing the downstream industries in the kingdom. Because at the end of the day, the downstream industries are the bigger employer and are the bigger added value to the GDP. He uh, instituted a rule that uh, gas will not be given to anybody who wants to make a petrochemical plant, uh, the, the likes of uh, companies that Sabic uh, did and Tasnia and other uh, petrochemical companies, will not be given to anybody unless they develop downstream industries. These initiatives attracted a wave of new investments that led to an unprecedented growth in new petrochemical projects in the kingdom. His Royal Highness always sets challenging objectives. He was not satisfied with us only bringing in the technologies that we understood well. He pushed us to add SBR and carbon black, and then insisted that we add a rubber application teaching institute to develop a workforce with the skills necessary to grow a new industry. Your Royal Highness, I doubt if anybody in the world have been responsible for having more chemical plants constructed than you. You had an early vision and you implemented that vision in record time. You can see today all of those chemical plants that were part of what you helped create. To maximize the value from each unit of allocated gas, the Ministry's team led by His Royal Highness stimulated the production of new specialty and performance chemicals. In so doing, he helped to exponentially expand and diversify Saudi Arabia's industrial portfolio by 66% to 120 high-value products by the end of 2017. Prince Faisal saw great potential in enabling the plastic conversion industry and supporting the development of small and medium-sized enterprises in the kingdom. He worked tirelessly with his team to attract local and international investors to build a new set of mid and downstream projects in Saudi Arabia. So he was properly uh, a leader in giving guidance to the company. As a CEO of major petrochemical companies, he had the opportunity to work with various heads of state and leaders and putting joint ventures together for petrochemical plants. 
I'll never forget how well prepared you always were. In fact, you had a chart that showed all the different possibilities of all the different kinds of plants and you knew which partner had the best technology, which one had the best marketing, and you were interviewing us to determine who would properly serve the kingdom as you picked joint venture partners. In 2007, Prince Faisal championed the establishment of the National Industrial Clusters Development Program as an autonomous government entity. The program's role was to develop target industrial clusters and enable investments in sectors including automotive, minerals and metals, downstream conversion, solar renewable energy, and many more. Out of this initiative were born Saudi Arabia's first value parks in several industrial locations, as the industry's portfolio evolved with the introduction of new and more complex technologies, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal persuaded companies to establish cutting-edge facilities in the kingdom to develop new products and applications and increase the value added to the local economy. In return for the allocation of gas, Prince Faisal compelled industry players to build research and application development centers in Riyadh, Dahran, and Jubail. Similarly, in 2008, he persuaded SABIC to fund the establishment of the National Research and Development Center for Sustainable Agriculture, Istidama, in the Riyadh Techno Valley. As the industry was rapidly evolving, so were its needs for well-trained talent. To develop and upskill the Saudi workforce, Prince Faisal encouraged companies to build specialized vocational institutions across the kingdom. The investment was in the neighborhood of 250 to 300 million rial that was committed and uh, it, it included uh, uh, facilities, classrooms, laboratories, and uh, accommodation for the, the students. As a result of that, uh, His Royal Highness pushed for 12 more institutions, but not necessarily in downstream of petrochemical, but in uh, other. Um, mining, minerals, petroleum, name it. Uh, but the idea, uh, he, he picked it and, and, and even expanded it. The effort and the support from his royal highness was unlimited. Another brainchild of Prince Faisal's was the establishment of industrialization and energy services company, Taqa, in 2003. As the only service company in the kingdom with its activities in the petroleum, mineral, petrochemical, electrical, and water desalination industries, Talqa contributed to in-country value creation and new job addition. In the late 1990s, his contribution to the kingdom's economic diversification extended to the mining and minerals processing sector. This was in line with government's plans to develop the sector as the third pillar of the Saudi economy after oil and petrochemicals. He championed a number of key initiatives, including the development of a comprehensive national mineral strategy the strategy entailed leveraging the kingdom's mineral resources to create world-class mining and fertilizer sectors. His motives were clear. He really wanted a company that makes a difference in the mineral industry. The newly built mining city of Ras al Khair required significant power supplies as well as the development of major infrastructure. None of this would have been possible without the great work and support of Prince Faisal. So it was Prince Faisal who gets the credit for putting his head and working with the Ma'adin team to establish the concepts, get the company going. Prince Faisal's service to the industry was shaped by tremendous challenges. The road ahead was difficult and long, and yet he overcame every challenge with great determination. And he lobbied very hard to convince them that this is a viable thing, it's important for the kingdom, it will diversify the economy, and the railroad will help the transportation. We have to do a mining strategy for Saudi Arabia, not just for Ma'adi. This is for the whole nation. It's something that shows how visionary he is and how determined he is. With the great support of our partner Sabic and the leadership of Mohammed Al Mahdi and Yusuf Al Banyan, the results are apparent for all to see. Kimia now has a world-class rubber and elastomers production facility. This was only possible with the support of Prince Faisal. Maximizing job creation, building local capabilities, 
and delivering economic prosperity were the driving force behind his strategy and vision. He sets high standards. He makes you earn your position in the kingdom. And he is always fair and always candid. You know that he is driving to bring the very best to Saudi Arabia and working solely in the best interests of its people. He had the national agenda in his head. He wants the country to move forward. He wants the Saudis to be trained and employed. Every single project, we don't start the project without having 50% of the staff Saudis. Saudiization was something that he has always put as a priority. Achieving these goals, he believed, was essential to the economic success of Saudi Arabia and securing its future. On the mineral side, Prince Faisal has done more than anybody else for Saudi Arabia on the mineral sector. With Saudi Arabia at a pivotal stage of its journey towards transformation, there has never been a better time to celebrate the lifetime achievements of Prince Faisal and bestow him with the GPCA Legacy Award, Al Ruwad. Your Royal Highness, congratulations on winning the GPCA Legacy Award. You truly are one of the pioneers in the Arabian Gulf chemical industry. I'd like to thank him for his never wavering personal drive, his friendship and his support of our Kemia joint venture. On behalf of ExxonMobil, congratulations on receiving this year's GPCA Legacy Award. I had a great privilege to work with you and I wish you the best in your future endeavors. The legacy you have uh, uh, left uh, in that role uh, will be remembered for many, many years to come and hopefully also we'll see you continuing uh, contribution to this uh, beloved country. Thank you very much.